For the 2014 IndyCar season, Juan Pablo Montoya returned to the IndyCar series with Team Penske. He would join alongside Elio Castroneves and Will Power, and despite racing in the NASCAR Cup Series for the last seven seasons with Chip Ganassi Racing, he would get up to speed pretty quick. It was an exciting return to the series for many people, as the 2000 Indy 500 champion and 1999 kart champion had pretty high expectations, especially driving for Team Penske. In 2014, Juan would finish 4th in the standings and would pick up one victory at Pocono, winning the fastest 500 mile race in history. So as the IndyCar series rolled into St. Petersburg to start the 2015 season, Juan Pablo Montoya was looking to be a legit championship contender. And that's exactly what he was. 2015 had some interesting rule changes as Honda and Chevrolet were able to make their own aero kits for their cars. As well as double points would be rewarded at the Indianapolis 500 and the championship finale in Sonoma. And that would be very important because it would be a factor in determining this championship. Team Penske was now a four car operation in 2015 as they added Simon Pagino. Penske would lock out the top four spots and Juan Pablo Montoya would be in fourth behind his teammates to start the season. Juan would actually end up losing his spot coming out of the first turn and would remain heavily under pressure. But the most important thing is, especially at St. Petersburg, is surviving those first couple of turns and that's exactly what Juan Pablo Montoya did and was able to settle into the fifth spot. On lap 38, now in the third spot, Montoya was part of a four car Penske train leading the field and keeping himself in position to contend for the win. As the race was approaching its closing stages and the teams were in their fuel window, Juan Pablo Montoya who was running in second right behind leader Will Power would make his final pit stop with 29 laps to go. Will Power would come in on the very next lap out of the lead of the race, but when things cycled back through, Juan Pablo Montoya was ahead of Will Power and in the lead of the race. After the pit stop, Montoya built himself quite a nice lead, but with 10 laps to go, Will Power completely erased that lead. During a commercial break, he made a move on Juan Pablo Montoya going into turn 10, and the two made contact, breaking one of the winglets off the front wing of Will Power's car. And more debris came out from underneath it when he reached the front straightaway. With these new arrow kits, Winglets flying off and debris was a huge problem throughout the entire race. After this contact, Will Power would stay in touch with Montoya, but would not make a challenge for the lead for the rest of the race. But on the final lap going into turn number 10, Charlie Kimball would spin right in front of leader Juan Pablo Montoya. But fortunately, he spun off into the runoff area and Juan Pablo Montoya was clear of any incident. His first win of the season and his 13th career in the Verizon IndyCar Series, Juan Pablo Montoya wins at St. Petersburg. Juan Pablo Montoya gets the win in the season opener in St. Petersburg, although a little controversy with his teammate Will Power as the two made contact. And this would be Juan Pablo Montoya's first road course win in IndyCar since 1999. With this being the first race and everything, this would obviously give Juan Pablo Montoya the championship lead as he held a seven point advantage over his teammate Will Power. The second round of the 2015 IndyCar series headed to Louisiana at NOLA Motorsports Park. This was the one and only IndyCar race at the track and I made an entire video dedicated to this race so you could check it out on my channel, I'll link it in the description below. The weekend was plagued by heavy rain and qualifying was completely cancelled so this would put Juan Pablo Montoya on pole as the grid was set by points. The track was very wet to start the race as everyone was on wet tires but it wasn't currently raining at the time of the green flag and conditions were looking like they were going to improve throughout the race. Juan Pablo Montoya would hold the lead through turn one and he would end up leading the first 13 laps of the race. Montoya would only lose the lead for one lap as he came to make a green flag pit stop and change to slick tires as several drivers already have the previous six laps. As the track was drying quickly, but conditions were still very tricky, as the general racing line for the most part was dry, but there was several areas around the track that were still extremely wet. Montoya would remain in the lead for the next 18 laps, but several of those laps were plagued by incidents and caution laps, as almost every restart someone got into trouble. After the third caution of the day, a restart on lap 
32. Montoya was still out front, but for the third consecutive time, the field wouldn't even make it one lap without the yellow flag coming out as Sage Karam got his car stuck in the gravel trap. By this point, IndyCar officials have already elected to change the distance of the race to a timed event of a maximum of 1 hour and 45 minutes as more heavy rain was approaching the racetrack. And under this yellow, Montoya would hit pit road to make a pit stop. Montoya would get off pit road first, but would have to restart in the seventh position behind six drivers who ended up staying out and have pitted on a previous caution. Unfortunately for Juan, the carnage would continue for the rest of the race and he would only have a total of three green flag laps to try to get back to the front and the race would eventually end under the yellow flag, resulting in Juan settling for a fifth place finish. After leading the most laps. He would slightly increase his championship lead to 10 points now over his other teammate Elio Castroneves. But the real crazy stat coming out of this race is that he was 50 points ahead of eventual champion Scott Dixit after these first two races. Round 3 saw the IndyCar series go to the iconic street circuit in Long Beach, California. Once again, Juan Pablo Montoya showed good speed in qualifying and would start second alongside his teammate Elio Castroneves on the front row. The initial start of the race was questionable in my opinion as the cars weren't lined up double file very well at all, but they still gave him the green flag. Montoya tried to look to the inside of his teammate Castroneves going into turn number number one but got blocked and had to back off the throttle resulting in Scott Dixon getting around him on the outside so he would fall to the third position. This race only had one yellow flag in the early stages due to debris on the racetrack and for the most part Juan Pablo Montoya had an uneventful day although in the closing stages of the race he would have to fight hard to hold off his teammate Simon Pagano to hold on to the third and final podium spot as that's exactly what he would do and come home with a third place finish with his teammate Elio Castroneves finishing second and Scott Dixon who dominated most of the day picking up his first victory of the 2015 season. The unfortunate thing for Montoya is he would actually lose a little bit of his points lead as his teammate Elio Castroneves would close in to three points back heading into round number four and with Scott Dixon's victory he would move up 10 spots in the standings to fourth and go from 50 to 32 points back. Round four Four would take the IndyCar series to Barber Motorsports Park in Alabama and this would be a tough weekend for Juan Pablo Montoya as he would start all the way down in the 15th spot. His teammate and closest championship rival Elio Castroneves would be on pole for the race. This would also be important because you had earned one bonus championship point for scoring the pole in the race, another one for leading a lap, and you can get an additional two points for leading the most laps. So before this race even started, started when Pablo Montoya's lead was reduced to two points. Juan wouldn't really be a factor the entire race as he was stuck mid-pack throughout the day and on lap 29 he would have to pit under green to change his front wing as he suffered some damage due to contact on a restart. A full course caution was able to help Juan Pablo Montoya catch back up to the field and he was trying to charge his way through but unfortunately he wasn't really helping himself as he made contact with Charlie Kimball damaging his car once again. Juan would have to settle for a 14th place finish, which seems disastrous, but late race trouble for Elio Castroneves resulted in him finishing 15th one spot behind Juan Pablo. So when everything was said and done, Juan Pablo Montoya would leave Barber with the exact same points lead that he had coming into the race, a slim three points over Elio Castroneves. But the huge difference was Scott Dixon managed to finish third and he would knock out a huge huge chunk of points here, moving up to third in the standings, only 13 points behind Juan Pablo Montoya, heading into the fifth round at the Indy GP. It's now the most important time of the year for IndyCar, the month of May, as round number five would see the IndyCars take on the road course at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. For the Indy GP, Juan Pablo Montoya would roll off in the fourth spot as Team Penske once again dominated in qualifying, locking out four of the top 
five spots with Scott Dixon being the only one interrupting that starting second alongside Will Power on the front row. Turn one would be chaotic of course as Elio Castroneves clips Scott Dixon causing chaos and cars going everywhere. Thankfully Juan Pablo Montoya was able to avoid it and get through cleanly as his two closest championship rivals have just ran into each other and found trouble. After the turn one lap one chaos, Juan Pablo Montoya would settle into the fourth position after the restart and would go on to have a solid day finishing in the third position. He would increase his points lead to five points over his teammate Will Power who moved into second after this victory, but would gain some good ground on Elio Castroneves who was in third, 13 back, and Scott Dixon who is fourth in the standings, 27 back now. Heading into the biggest race of the year, the Indianapolis 500. The 99th running of the Indianapolis 500 would have to see Juan Pablo Montoya try to come from mid-pack and the 15th spot to win it. A turn one lap one incident would bring out the yellow flag, but that wouldn't be the issue for Montoya. As the field was approaching the restart for the green, he was run into the back of by Simono Di Silvestro, damaging the right rear bumper and having it hang off the race car. The restart would be called off and the piece would actually fall off onto the racetrack and Montoya would have to come around to the pits to get his rear wing assembly replaced. Montoya would slowly and methodically make his way forward throughout the rest of the race as he was down in 30th position at one point but on lap 130 going into turn number one he would take the second position away from his teammate Simon Pagano and set his sights on race leader Scott Dixon. Montoya was now officially a threat to win this race. With less than 10 laps to go Montoya would find himself in the second spot battling his teammate Will Power for the victory as the two would swap first and second a few times in the closing stages. But coming to three laps to go Juan Pablo Montoya would make the move once again on Will Power and this would be the final lead change of the race as Juan Pablo Montoya was able to hold off his teammate Will Power and claim his second Indianapolis 500 victory. He was all the way back in 30th place after an opening laps crash. Here they come to the checkered flag and the winner of the Indianapolis 500 is Juan Pablo Montoya. Such a huge victory for Juan Pablo Montoya and Team Penske as remember this race was double points so this would be a big help to Juan Pablo Montoya's championship effort. The only issue is that Will Power who is second in the standings also finished second in this race and received double points for finishing second. This was good enough though to increase Juan Pablo Montoya's championship lead over Will Power to 25 points while Scott Dixon and Elio Castroneves remain tied in third 61 points back now. IndyCar's only doubleheader weekend of the 2015 season would take place at Belle Isle in Detroit for around 7 and 8. This weekend was plagued by weather and conditions were wet and rainy and miserable. Once again Team Penske would be super fast in qualifying putting all four cars in the top five with Juan Pablo Montoya starting in the third position. IndyCar also made some changes to the aero kits and those winglets that were such a problem and kept flying off at the slightest bit of contact are now removed and the front wings look more traditional, pretty similar to what we have today. Very similar to the Grand Prix of Louisiana earlier in the year, the track was extremely wet but not currently raining when the green flag would come out. Officials elected for a single file start due to the conditions, which was probably a good call, and the start was pretty tame and clean, and everyone was able to survive turn number one. On lap 15 under a yellow flag, everyone elected to hit pit road to put slicks on, which is pretty interesting seeing that the caution was out due to Charlie Kimball crashing into the wall after being one of the first ones on slick tires. But this would be a pivotal moment in the race. Seven other drivers were able to stay out under this yellow as they put on the slick tires right before Charlie Kimball ended up in the wall. So they were able to cycle around to the front of the field. Juan Pablo Montoya who was running in third ended up restarting in 10th. 
Everyone is on slick tires now, but there is more weather on the way to the racetrack. On lap 35, several drivers would hit pit road and take fuel and tires, but a lot of guys here, including Juan Pablo Montoya, would put on the rain tires as they knew the rain was about to hit the track, but it was still currently dry. So they would have to be very careful and nurse those tires to make sure that they don't wear them out. This would end up being a disastrous call for Montoya, as rain heavy enough for wet tires to matter wouldn't hit the track until about 10 laps later, so he really had to nurse those tires on pretty dry pavement and ended up shredding them, resulting him having to come to pit road once again to make a tire change. When heavy enough rain finally did hit the racetrack, the damage was already done to Montoya's race, as he was sitting in 10th one lap down. A combination of Luca Felipe going into the wall and lightning in the area would bring out the yellow flag and eventually the red flag which would bring all the cars down pit road to stop the race and the race would officially be called. This 10th place finish would shrink Montoya's lead back down to 11 points over his teammate Will Power who was able to finish 4th and 51 over Scott Dixon who finished 5th. Montoya would look to rebound in race number 2 but weather was still a factor. However that would actually end up helping Montoya out as qualifying was cancelled so the grid would have to be set on points giving Juan Pablo Montoya the pole position. Conditions were good enough this time for a double file start and Will Power would actually get the advantage on Montoya on the start and take the lead of the race coming out of the first turn, resulting in Power leading the first two laps of the race. However, it wouldn't be long for Juan Pablo Montoya to retake the lead as he would get a nice run down the long straightaway towards turn number three, forcing Will Power to take a defensive line. And with Will's shallow entry into the corner, Montoya was able to get a good run on the exit of the turn, get alongside him, and take the lead of the race. Now the first half of this race went extremely well for the conditions on how difficult Belle Isle is as a track, especially for Montoya as he continued to lead, and the first half didn't have a single caution. This race would take a 90 degree turn though on lap 37 when Rodolfo Gonzalez put his Dale Coin car into the wall, and the chaos was about to begin. The vast majority of the field would make a pit stop under this yellow flag including Montoya and the team elected to put on slicks and make a significant wing adjustment which would result in Juan Pablo Montoya losing two spots in the pits and him being extremely unhappy with the team and slick tires is still kind of a big risk at this point as the racing line itself is 100% dry you could see it but literally every other bit of the track is still wet so making passes would be very difficult and Montoya would have to to restart in the sixth position with some guys in front of him still on those wet tires. The second half of the race would see the longest green flag run of only five laps and in the closing stages Montoya would find himself in second place behind Sebastian Bourdais. But Montoya did have one issue, he was going to be extremely close on fuel. The restart coming to six laps to go to Kumasato who was in third behind Montoya would time the restart absolutely perfectly take advantage of Juan Pablo, take the second spot, and Graham Rahal was also able to slide by to take third away from Montoya as he slid to fourth by the time they were around turns one and two. And as that happened, his Penske teammates would crash together, Elio Castroneves and Will Power, that would bring out the yellow flag and eventually the red flag so they could try to end this one under green. But that didn't mean the fuel concerns were gone for Juan Pablo Montoya. The officials elected to change the race to a timed event and when the green flag came out there would be just over three minutes left until the conclusion of this race. Juan Pablo Montoya had to go into extreme fuel save mode and this would actually end up being beneficial for him and minimize the damage done because if they had to do all six laps he would have ran out of fuel. He would end up falling to the 10th spot and running out of fuel just past the start finish line. He would salvage a pretty good points day though as his three closest championship rivals will power Elio Castroneves and Scott Dixon all finished 18th, 19th, and 20th respectively, all crashed out of the race. This gave him an advantage of 21 points over Will Power, 63 over Scott Dixon, and 65 over Elio Castroneves. Round number 9 would see the IndyCars return to an oval in the Texas Motor Speedway. 
This one would be an uneventful one in terms of crashing and chaos as only one caution came out the entire race for debris, resulting in the fastest IndyCar race ever run at Texas Motor Speedway with an average speed of 191.94 miles per hour. Montoya's Penske teammate Will Power would have the pole position and Juan would roll off in the fifth starting spot. He would be a contender for the win all night, leading 16 laps before eventually finishing fourth behind winner Scott Dixon. Juan would increase his points lead over Will Power to 35 points with this result, but Scott Dixon who was in third would close the gap to 43 points back. Round 10 would see the Indy cars go north of the border to Toronto. This race was held in June instead of its traditional date in July due to Toronto hosting the Pan Am Games. And I was actually at this race. Montoya would top the charts in both practice sessions, but would end up qualifying third behind his two Penske teammates. Will Power and Simon Pagano. Similar to Louisiana and Detroit, the race would start under wet conditions, but it wasn't currently raining when the race started. Despite the conditions, this race would go its full distance and would only have two yellow flags for a minor incident involving James Jakes and a debris caution. This race had a ton of different strategies going and Montoya's team just couldn't quite get it right and would settle for a seventh place finish. Will Power's fourth place finish would shrink his points lead to 27 points and he'd be 45 ahead of third place Scott Dixon. Race 11 would see the IndyCar series travel out west to California and take on the Oval in Fontana. This is another race that I have a dedicated video on on my channel and I'll link it in the description below. Team Penske would once again show how fast their cars are in qualifying locking out the front row with Simon Pagano and Elio Castroneves but Juan Pablo Montoya had to start in the fifth position. This this race was wild from start to finish as it featured an IndyCar record of 80 lead changes throughout the day. And while Pablo Montoya would get credit for leading a total of 5 laps throughout the race, Montoya would just narrowly avoid disaster coming to the white flag as Ryan Briscoe has this big accident flipping in the infield that would end the race under a yellow flag and Montoya would end up with a 4th place finish. This would end up being a great point stay for Juan Pablo Montoya, as his teammate Will Power was involved in an earlier accident, resulting in a 19th place finish, and Scott Dixon finished two spots behind him in sixth. He would leave Fontana with a 46 point advantage over Will Power and a 49 point advantage over Scott Dixon. And his championship odds were looking pretty good. Race number 12 would see the IndyCar series head up to Wisconsin as they would take on the iconic Milwaukee Mile. Montoya would start down in the 8th spot so he had his work cut out for him just a little bit. He would work his way forward and was in striking distance all day but wasn't really a factor for the win. On lap 132 his closest championship rival and teammate Will Power would be involved in an accident for the second consecutive week which would pretty much all but eliminate his championship hopes. Montoya was running in 12th at the time of this accident so he knew he just had to move forward through the field, get a solid finish and he would have an excellent points day. Montoya was able to work his way forward to a 4th place finish and that would give him a 54 point advantage over Scott Dixon as his teammate Will Power has now fallen to 5th, 7 70 points back and pretty much out of contention. For the third consecutive race the IndyCar series would take on an oval as they visited Iowa and this one would be short lived for Juan Pablo Montoya. He would start up front in the third spot but only 10 laps in disaster would strike. There was no contact with another driver, unfortunately for Juan Pablo Montoya something would break and the car would just go straight into the outside wall putting an end to his day. This would result in a 24th and last last place finish, which is disastrous for championship hopes. The damage to his championship lead though would be minimal as Scott Dixon who was contending for the win all night ran into mechanical problems of his own and ended up finishing 18th several laps down, the last car running on the racetrack. Dixon would fall to third in the standings 48 points behind Montoya and Graham Rahal would move up into second 42 points behind Juan Pablo Montoya, entering the next race in mid-Ohio. With only three races remaining on the calendar, Montoya needed a good day, but he was going to have to do it from mid-pack as he qualified in 10th. 
Scott Dixon was looking to rebound from his misfortunes last week and scored the pole position. Well, Graham Rahal, who has emerged as a late season contender moving into second in the standings, would actually start behind Montoya in 13th. Dixon would lead the first 22 laps of the race but would get caught out by a debris caution as he never made his pit stop yet as several other drivers did and this would put him towards the back of the field. Well Montoya on the other hand cycled all the way up to second place behind Tristan Vautier who was leading the race. And the only unfortunate thing about that was that Graham Rahal who was second in points was right behind Montoya in third. After another round of green flag pit stops, Juan Pablo Montoya was able to cycle around to the lead of the race. And his team looked like they have nailed the strategy on this one, plus having good pace in that car. But second in points, Graham Rahal was only two spots behind him within striking distance of the lead. On lap 66 though, the whole complexion of this race would change as Sage Karam spun out bringing out a full course caution. Graham Rahal was on pit road completing his service as the yellow came out. As Several other drivers have already pitted, but Montoya, similar to Dixon earlier in the race, would get caught out and have to pit under this yellow, losing a ton of track position. Montoya would have to restart 12th, while Graham Rahal was in the lead of the race and Scott Dixon is now in 4th. Unfortunately, things wouldn't change much from this point as Graham Rahal would go on to win the race with Scott Dixon finishing 4th and Montoya was only able to get 11th. On top of that, Graham Rahal led 23 laps in the race just surpassing Scott Dixon's 22 and Montoya's 21 to get those two additional bonus points. And now the pressure was on Montoya as his championship lead went all the way down to only 9 points over Graham Rahal, but he still had a 34 point margin over Scott Dixon with only 2 races remaining. Only 2 races left and the IndyCar series would head to the Tricky Triangle in Pocono. Now I will just say real quick that this was a sad day for IndyCar as this is the race that we lost Justin Wilson and I won't be touching too much on that on this video, but some very important things happened regarding the championship fight in this one. Right from the get-go in this one, Montoya would have his work cut out for him as he'd have to come from deep in the field in the 19th starting spot. Graham Rahal would start 5th and Scott Dixon would be mid-pack at 11. This one would be a tough battle of attrition as it had a lot of accidents, the initial start waved off, and even a caution for wildlife which is not uncommon at Pocono. But the first big championship implications wouldn't come until lap 93 when Graham Rahal was involved in an accident in turn number 3 with Tristan Vautier. Thankfully Graham was alright but it was pretty clear that his day was done and most likely his championship hopes as well. Juan Pablo Montoya was able to avoid the carnage all day and come home with a solid third place finish despite starting that deep in the field. The race would end up ending under the yellow flag and Scott Dixon who was pretty much a non-factor all day finished ninth. So this would give Montoya a 34 point advantage over Graham Rahal and a 47 point advantage over Scott Dixon going into the final race of the season. So I have to remind you the final race in Sonoma is a double points race. If that wasn't the case, Montoya would probably easily lock up this championship with just having a pretty solid day. But with any issues, Graham Rahal and Scott Dixon could easily steal it away from him. Technically, Will Power and Elio Castroneves were both eligible to win the championship as well, but they would pretty much need all three of those guys in front of them to have absolutely horrible days and finish at the back of the pack. Championship leader Juan Pablo Montoya would roll off 5th, Graham Rahal 6th, and Scott Dixon would start 9th. Graham Rahal got off to a pretty rough start as Scott Dixon was already past him just a couple of turns into the race despite starting three spots behind him. And unfortunately for Graham, he would pretty much be a non-factor all day. By lap 25, Scott Dixon charged his way up to third place, but Montoya was still running in fifth so this was nowhere near good enough to be a championship threat at this point. After a yellow came out on lap 33 for a slow car on the track, pretty much everyone would hit pit road, including all the championship contenders. However, there was some alternate strategies going on, so those guys would be a little bit deeper in the field. But on the restart, some huge championship implications would happen. 
as Juan Pablo Montoya would make contact with his teammate Will Power, sending Power for a spin, damaging Montoya's car, and bringing out the caution once again. This would result in him having to come to pit road to make repairs as the team had to change the front wing, and all track position that he currently had would be lost and he would restart at the rear of the field, as very few cars took this opportunity to come to the pits under this yellow. On lap 53 of the race when those off-sequence drivers all came in to make their pit stops, Scott Dixon would take over the lead of the race. Montoya was still down in the 13th spot, although he was clawing his way forward, he was 20 points behind Scott Dixon as they run, with the laps winding down. The final restart of the day would come with only 12 laps remaining and Montoya was in the 8th spot while Dixon was still in the lead and has pretty much dominated the second half of this race. And as they ran at this point, Dixon would have the championship so Montoya had to make up a few more spots. And with 9 laps to go, Montoya would have to avoid a spinning Graham Ray Hall, which he thankfully was able to do, as Sebastian Bourdais got into the back of him, which would result in Sebastian Bourdais getting a penalty, so Montoya was able to move up 2 spots here and get 6th place. With 5 laps to go, he was now tied with Scott Dixon for the championship lead, as Scott Dixon was able to lock up the additional bonus points for leading the most laps in this race. And on top of that, as they run, Scott Dixon would have the tiebreaker as this would be his third victory of the season and Montoya only has two. He would try his absolute hardest and would run down Ryan Briscoe by the final lap but he just wasn't close enough to make a move happen and would have to settle for sixth place while Scott Dixon took the victory and the championship right out of Juan Pablo Montoya's hands. Which must have been a huge blow for Juan Pablo Montoya as technically he never actually lost the championship lead by points the entire season and would end up being on the opposite end of a tiebreaker losing the championship unlike when he won his car championship in 1999 on a tiebreaker. But you have to give credit to Scott Dixon they don't call him the Iceman for nothing. He needed to have an absolutely flawless and perfect day and he absolutely did. This was another race that I covered in its entirety on my channel and I will link that one in the description as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is probably the biggest and most ambitious video I've made on my channel yet and it just goes to show how important every single point is especially when you only have a 16 race calendar. That's going to do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the second edition of Missing Championships on my channel. If you're into IndyCar history, make sure you hit that subscribe button as every Tuesday we revisit great moments in IndyCar history. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you want to support the channel in a bigger way, you could click that join button and get access to exclusive perks for as little as 99 cents a month. That's all for now. Take care everyone.